Hey everybody, welcome to Devotionables, brief devotions for busy people. My name is Derek Riley. I'm a teacher and one of the BFGs here at 9th and O. And today we're going to start a new series in Devotionables. Uh, we have been walking through the Bible in 16 verses uh, to see the whole scope of Scripture and the story that it's telling. Now we're going to take a different approach because as we go through the Bible and as we read, there's some passages that we come across that we just tend to get wrong. That either it's because people around us are telling us that it's one way or that maybe we heard this taught the wrong way at one point. Maybe it's just something in our sinful hearts that wants these verses to mean something that they don't. But because we love God's word, because we take it seriously, it's worth understanding in the big picture and in the small details and getting them right. And praise God, God's word is clear for us to read and to understand in context and to hear the truth of what he's saying. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be going through looking at each of these verses and saying that maybe there's times that we get this wrong. And we want to take time to listen to the verses and hear the hope and the good news that is in them. The first of those verses that we're going to talk about is in James chapter 5. In context, in the book of James, uh, he's been talking over and over again about how much we can rely on the Lord. In James chapter 1, it says that uh, the Lord carries us through trials and temptations, that when we face trials of many times, we can consider it joy because the Lord will preserve us. James tells us that if anyone's lacking wisdom, he can pray and ask the Lord, and God will be good to give him wisdom. In chapter 4, James says that in any circumstance, whatever plans we make, whatever things we plan to do, and whatever we think about the future, we should say, I'm going to do that as the Lord wills. That as the Lord wills, I will go about my business. I will go here and buy that thing. I will go there and do business. If it's according to God's will. Because he wants what's good and right for us. So we can trust in it. Then we come in James chapter 5 to verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. This wonderful passage in James that tells us in whatever circumstances that we can cry out to the Lord. If it's a good circumstance, we can cry out in praise. In bad circumstances, we can cry out to him in prayer. But there's different ways that the church has gotten this wrong over history. And there's ways that we get it wrong today. Um, There's ways that we look at this verse and say that this is going to offer some kind of magical formula for us to be healed. If you've never been in a situation where you are sick or one of your close family members is sick and you're desperately praying for the Lord to heal, uh, you may not know just how much in those moments our, our sinful human side wants to say, I will do anything I can to fix this, even if that means looking for something else besides the Lord's help. That I will, I will go through anything, I will do whatever I can to heal in this situation and to make this person better. What James is telling us is that we don't have to go looking for other things. We don't have to go looking for any person, uh, including ourselves, to do the right thing, to work things together so that we'll be healed. Praise God, he's given us doctors and medical professionals who, uh, who have wisdom and who can treat and medicine that's a grace and a gift for us when we're sick. But ultimately, our hope is in God. There's some times where people will tell you that if you're sick or if someone you know is sick and that they're in need of healing, that all they need is faith and that if they're not getting better, that it's just because there wasn't enough faith, that somehow it's their fault or your fault for not having enough faith when you pray. Or maybe they'll tell you that you're not going to the right person, that James says to go to the elders and have them anointed with oil. Maybe you you found the wrong elders and the wrong oil and you got it wrong. James isn't giving us a prescription for some magic spell to go through that will bring about healing. 
What James is telling us is that we can trust in God. Just like we trust God to ordain our steps, just like we trust God to carry us through trials and temptations, we can trust God in our sickness too. And we can say that God is good in this situation. We can pray to him and pray for healing. And God is good. And sometimes he will heal and praise God. They will be right. They will rise up. They will go back. They'll be healed and restored. And that through the Lord's work in their life, they may even confess him and give glory to him. And they'll be forgiven their sins along with their physical problems. But James' message is not that our hope is in the healing. Our hope is in the Lord who heals. So there will be times when you pray for someone to be healed and they will not see that in this life. There will be times where we pray for healing and restoration and it doesn't come the way we want it to come. That doesn't mean that James is wrong. James is telling us that God is good one way or the other. So as the Lord wills, we pray that this person will be healed. If the Lord says that it's not for them to be healed in the way we want, we can trust that God is good. He is sovereign. He wants what is best for us, and he knows what is best for us more than what we know ourselves. And so we can trust in him, good or bad, whatever. We cry out to the Lord and praise his name.